the upper section of the cupboard that I'm building has a recessed portion that is really half a hexagon and so it's two front styles have a cross section like this it's sort of like a home plate in a baseball field been squashed and they begin as a block of oak like this and I'll show you the steps I go through to first hew that shape and then take it in the shop and plane it from a um, a full-scale plan of the covered uh, footprint I made this little uh, template out of that and that then will sit here and I'll use it as a guide what I'm going to do is snap three chalk lines one representing each of those points and hew off these two outer front corners First one's right down the middle. Easy enough to do. Just eyeball it. Next one I need a pencil for. So what I do from here. is just make a mark roughly in line with those points and then set the same business up down here at this end <laughs> and I wish that had done that first because my center line could have moved over a little bit And then from there, I'll snap more chalk lines. That one. And this one. So those give me my targets for doing. I'll hew this in stages. I'll hew what I call the peak, that those front angled faces, and take those in the shop and plane them and get the angle just right. And then these two adjacent faces are 90 degrees to those, so I'll come back out and hew those after I plane these two. And the hewing is nothing uh, very earth-shattering. It's really just trying to cut a facet down this corner that connects this chalk line and now that pencil line. I corrected that middle line. So I start at the bottom and just make some scoring cuts like that. I've got the piece tilted over towards me. And now stand it more upright. It's the same speech I give about hewing all the time. And what I'm doing there is coming close to my line here. I'm well away from it there still. but I can't see that line when I'm back here swinging the hatchet. And so I'm just trying to establish a, a bevel here. And now I'll tilt it so that I'm connecting the edge of this bevel with that line. So I'm hitting that arras right there now.
So I've flipped it end for end and do the same thing the other way. Right there where sort of connect the two sections. And that swath is pretty good. It's away from the line but leaves me enough for planing. And then I'll just do the same thing to this side. So there's those scoring cuts along this near line, and then you break those off, and now repeat the hewing toward that midline, and break those off. And then flip it end for end. the rough hewn bit. It could come down a little more there, but it would be quick enough to get that with the plane. So the next step is in the shop. Now I've got the hewing done and time to put it on the bench here and start to really dress these surfaces. Uh, I have stayed off of those layout lines initially. The axe work is just to roughly establish that shape and I can just set it on the bench, shove it against the bench dog, and start to plane it. But you see the angle the plane is at is leaned over like that. An easier thing to do is to take some piece of flat stock. It's good if it's the same length or even longer than the work piece. And then you have to knock up the plenty stuff, the bench dog, and now it's pretty much, yeah, so much for that. Well, let me see what I got here. Why is that sliding around? So you want to be able to get at it without it skittering this way. It could be even higher, I guess. More like that. Yeah. That's the ticket. Like I said in the text on these projects, it's been uh, easily 20 years since I've made these. Yeah. So what if I had something thicker? And now this surface I want to treat just like any flat surface I'm creating and check it with a straight edge and check it with winding sticks. Yeah, it's a little twisted, but it's not quite flat either. Not terrible yet.
that. Look at that. So out on this edge, it's good. Here toward the peak, it has a bump. The finished length is about 18 inches. And this is now 21. Winding sticks again. Still a little crooked. So that's just one face. Now I need to do the adjacent face. And you saw that little guide I had cut out a mat board uh, when I was riding this. So I'll just use that to set this adjustable bevel. And I forget what this angle is, but I know this is it. And I'm real close. So at this stage of the game, I'm laying that on, I'm laying the handle of that adjustable bevel on my planed surface and getting a reading. So down there it's actually really good. And then up here this part is high. So the bevel is not touching over here. And so that will um, guide me as I'm planing this. Let's see if I can plane the same direction I was going before. And I might go right to this jointer. So remember that was high. around a little bit and that uh, isn't the best scenario. Let's see what that did. It brought it down but it's still not right on. It's sort of a bump right in there. And I've not hit here yet. So one way to rectify some of all this Mickey Mouse is to put a hold fast clamping and strip right there. So now this two inch piece can't slide anymore. Let's see if that keeps me in place. Yeah. <laughs> so much for that. There's another piece on this cupboard that I'll make a cradle for it for planing it. And this one you could do that as well. Alright, well what I did is right there, sort of put it back. There's here at the end, it's right on the money. Here it's not, and it's not, and then back here it is again, or it's real close. 
but it's not sharp right there either. So those two faces come to a, a point, and here there's a little bevel between them. So I'll end up going back and forth between these two faces to try to get this just exactly right. And that's why I leave it wide at this stage. That's one reason. All right, the angle I'm pretty happy with, but I still have that bevel right there. So, off I go. Yeah. Closer. The bevel's disappearing. I'm sure my angle is messed up now. Yeah. But that's all right. So off of here it needs to come now. Close. All right, I'm going to have a look at it there, and then I'll mark out those widths and begin to work the next two edges. So before I mark the widths of these faces, I want to make sure one thing is that that peak is straight. And it looks okay. It would be best if it ran dead in line with the fibers of the uh, board. It doesn't. It runs a little bit that way. And But I'm not so concerned about that that I'm going to change this now. And to mark out the width, a marking gauge won't do because you can't bear against that face and get that width. So I need to use uh, a pencil and a ruler, a chalk line and a ruler. Um, you can just use your, uh, your guide, set that up in that way, and mark those widths like that. I'm adding a little bit because this is dead green, remember, and I'm anticipating it will distort some in its width. And then sort of connect the dots kind of thing. that. And like that. Now, that's a lot of wood to take off, so that's going to be back to the hatchet. And this face that I need to create here, these two faces, let's look at them on this end, they are the ones that the mortises will go in. And they need to be 90 degrees to that face. So, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I don't know if I'll be able to do this. Hold this goofy thing trapped in my legs. Like that. And like that. 
So it's a sizable amount of wood coming off of there and you see why I'll go to the hatchet. And this face doesn't matter. I do want that face to be at least an inch. And that one looks pretty close. Oh no, it's an inch and a half. That's plenty. Because one of these is the style where the door to the cupboard goes. And in that inch and a half face, there'll be mortised a little uh, sort of floating tenon that'll be the door stop. Um, so I'm just going to take it out and hew it, and we don't need to look at that. It's the same as hewing the initial shape in the beginning. And then I'll come back in and show you how I wrestle with holding it to plane it. So here's the hewn shape now. Stayed outside my lines a bit. I had struck a chalk line on the inside as well. And now it's a question of how do you hold this funny thing. So what? I don't have a row of holes out here near the edge of my bench. And so all I did is clamp that down with the hold fast, that two by two. Shove the piece in here. Put this shim here that's just stopped by that um, hand screw. So let's see what that's going to do for me. Uh, well, there's some excitement in the neighborhood. Hope everybody's all right. Somebody wrote to me recently and said, it looks like you live in the wilderness and it sounds like you live in Detroit. But there's a main road just, just a few doors down where all the fire engines and ambulances go. trying to do at first is just establish a surface and then start to assess where I am and as is often the case where I come on to it is where I'm uh, the furthest afield right there the angle is pretty good and I'm still just north of my pencil line, so I do need to work down here. And... Still a lot to come down on the inside there. The most critical elements in this surface are that that outer edge right there is straight and that the, the front face or side face, either one, is even in its width. So I have a little more to come off of this end, so I'm going to flip it around. <laughs> which it doesn't want it to. Uh, this crane off made won't hold it that way. So, and this plane might be set a little finer. It's a little bit longer than that previous one, uh, only two inches. Because I'm dipping off the end there, and as I said, I am going to cross cut this in the end after I cut the joinery. Uh, 
so there's a little bit of forgiveness there. But you don't want to rely too much on that. I've got the angle better. So I'm going to quit there. And I'll check that width. It's two and three eighths. Yeah, it doesn't look even, but it's, and it's real close to it. Uh, there's a little forgiveness. I need to finish it two and a quarter. And uh, after this has dried for a month or so, I'll replane these surfaces and these uh, mortising areas here. So let me see how this wants to hold. A little bit tilted. Might be all right. And that's a pretty rough surface. That's where I did the ribbing, even. Uh. So here I started with the scrub plane, because this surface was a little rougher. So, whoops. I could back that up a little. Back in like that. See how that does. Keep that. Two and a half. Closer to three eighths. Um, well, two and a half is a lot bigger than two and a quarter. Oh, so I'll try to take some of that down. Yeah, it's nice and straight though. This surface is the original split when I split the log and I don't need to do anything to it. I'm just going to leave it as is and I'm going to cut about half an inch off of this end and glue both ends to slow down the water coming out of that. And as I did before, I'll mark the date on it and go find a chunk of oak and plane another one. <laughs> 